y'all. Thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Hope everybody's having a great week. I am, but I messed up today and I will be the first to admit when I messed up. I had a customer come in with their Husqvarna 240 chainsaw. They needed a primer bulb. So they thought. Of course, when somebody's saw has sat long enough in the shed and the primer bulb deteriorates, a lot of times it goes along with everything else. The fuel lines, the diaphragms in the carburetor, fuel filter. And uh, after I, of course, just put the primer bulb in, because that's all they asked for, it didn't prime, wouldn't start. So I had to call the customer and let them know that it uh, needed some more work. And they said, go ahead with it. So I did. I. Uh, took it all apart, which this is one of the most difficult Husqvarna saws to take apart. And I'm going to show you why, but, uh, did the fuel lines, fuel filter, fresh fuel, primer bulb, carburetor kit, um, soaked the carburetor in, um, the, uh, ultrasonic cleaner and put it all back together. And after an hour of doing all that, it leaked all over the counter. Why did it leak? Because I didn't do one small step that I should have. There is a tank grommet going into the fuel tank where the fuel line goes through. And I checked it and I thought it was snug and the fuel line was snug, but it's leaking bad. So I have got to tear the entire thing apart again, but my loss is your gain. So I'm going to show you exactly how to completely tear apart a Husqvarna 240 chainsaw and replace everything in it. I might as well show you how and put it all back together. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this split screen, so hopefully you can get a good view. I'm working on, you know, trying to get the best uh, angles possible. So let me know in the comments if you like how I'm doing this. Um, first, we're going to remove the top cover. I am going to use a standard flathead, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it does have Torx and I think it's a T25 if you want to use that instead of a screwdriver. Now I've already replaced the plug, the fuel lines, a carburetor kit, a primer bulb, a fuel filter, and put fuel in it, but it all ran out. Um, I didn't put the new air filter in yet. The old air filter was disgusting. I mean, that's just compacted with, with sawdust. I mean, bad. So um, this is the parts. I like to put all the parts, um, here's the old gaskets and diaphragms, the plug. I like to put them all back in a baggie and give them back to the customer. That way they can see what we changed out and uh, know it was worth what they're spending their money on. So we're gonna set that aside. I'm going to remove, there's a screw on the air filter cover um, part right here. It's just like a, a little metal piece that holds the air filter in it. And we're going to use our T25 to remove the screw and take out this little piece that holds in the air filter. Um, next, we are going to loosen the handle because the only way to get in here, it's really compact up in here. And the only way to get to these screws and the nuts that are holding on the carburetor is to actually loosen everything up. So I am going to first use my T25 to take the uh, screw out of the side of the handle. Then I'm going to turn the saw over and there's actually another screw holding this spring buffer on the bottom and we're going to take that one out. And you can get to everything this way, but if you want to, there's one more screw right here on the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and take that one out too. Make it real simple to get to everything because if you don't, you're prying and you're never going to get there. So 
All right, now that we have the handle loose, the only thing that is still holding the handle to the chainsaw is the throttle lever. So we're not going to want to yank away yet. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to lift up the side here and there is a small screw right here. And I believe it's probably either a T20 or a T, let me see if it's a T20. Yeah, it's a T20 and it's a small screw that's gonna um, have to be removed to remove this back cover of the air filter base. So we're gonna take that one out. Sort of hard holding this where y'all can see it. And once that's loose, there's another screw going into the air filter base right here. We're going to use our T25, no, T20 to take that one out. This is a really long screw. Might wanna move the handle over to the left side to get to it. That screws in the uh, air filter base, and there's also two nuts holding on the air filter base, and we're going to want to remove those two. And I've, this has no gas in it. All right, so I'm going to use my eight millimeter to remove the two nuts in the air filter base. And I don't know if you can see that too good, but there's two nuts right there. And we're just going to take them off. I'm using my multi-tool wear -a set. I love it. I will put a link down below if you would like to get yourself one. Comes with Torx, um, screwdrivers, and a metric set. It's awesome. All right, so we're going to remove the air filter base now that we have it unattached, and we're going to take the carburetor off. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off the new fuel lines that I just put on this primer bulb because we're just gonna get it away. And there's also another fuel line um, down to the bottom right. Now, a lot of times you, when you get into these, all the fuel lines are deteriorated and you have no which have no idea which way they go back on. So I'm gonna show you exactly how they go when we put it all back together. So now that I have all three lines unattached, we are going to pull the engine up away from the handle a little bit and we're just gonna pull straight out. Now the throttle trigger or throttle up linkage is still attached, but that's okay. It's not gonna mess up. Now once, once you pull it off, it, it just comes right off. Once you've released all of the screws from your handle and you've also pulled the carburetor off, you can pry it back just a little bit, pull your carburetor off, and then you can release the throttle lever linkage right here. You could actually take this whole handle off and move everything out of the way if you like to. You're just gonna have to remember how to put it back together. And if your throttle linkage comes out of the trigger, you'll just need to remember that it needs to go in the slot that way before you mount it back up like that. So we're gonna set the carburetor aside because we're going to uh, show you how to put the kit in in just a second, even though it's got the new kit. And I don't know if you can see it, there is a grommet down here, and this is what leaked on me. So we are going to remove the new fuel filter and line that we just put in today. I'm just gonna come out that way with it, set it aside. And I'm going to take this grommet out. There we go. It's a little hard and that's probably why it was leaking. And I want to clean this out a little bit so uh, I don't get no gunky down in there. And I get lots of people that comment about cleaning things. Now, I do not actually clean things, blow them off. I mean, when we get done with the units that we work on, they are clean. 
It's just, I'm not going to clean a saw before I fix it because a lot of times things can't be fixed in the end and why would you clean something before you're done fixing it? So now that we've got that cleaned out, I'm going to grab my new grommets. And don't have any grease here, but I think that I'm gonna be able to just push it right in with my thumb here, hopefully. Yeah, it's almost down in. Push a little more. Use my screwdriver to get that little side in. Very carefully. And we've got it in now. Hopefully you can see that. And we're going to put a line back in. Now is this one long enough? We'll just go ahead and use the line that came with the grommet. And I think I'll be able to just push it back down through without having to cut it sideways. A lot of people use the, the wire method. Um, I do not do that. It just seems faster to me to use the, uh, the uh, cutting it sideways method. Once you get it down so far, oh, I'm squishing my gasket. We're gonna get that out of the way so we don't mess it up any more than it already is. We're going to pull the fuel line out this way. I'm gonna cut off that little curved edge. Take my fuel filter. I'm going to stretch out the end of my line by sticking it on the end of the needle nose. I don't have my really tiny needle nose right now that I would normally stretch it with, but if you stretch it out just a little bit, it's so much easier to get your fuel filter back on. Just pops right on just like that. So, I'm gonna lay that. Make sure that it's laying in the bottom right side of the tank. That way when you're cutting on your side, fuel still gets to it. We got that in there. Now, um, initially I had to put a return line in there. For this one, I do take a line that you've got about mm, six inches sticking out here. I would have taken a line that's probably about seven to eight inches. I cut the end of the line sideways. And I don't have my scissors out here to show you, but I cut it straight down the center and leave it at a point to where I can stick it down in there. And then I take my hemostats and I go all the way into the back and I tug it through because it just has to be tugged in there a little bit to return the gas. So um, that's the way I like to do it. So that's where your return line goes in the bottom right back side over here. And then your fuel filter line comes out of this grommet. We're gonna pull it out just a little bit so it could reach back around to the other side of the carburetor like it's supposed to. Make sure it's still over, yeah, it's still hanging on that right side of the tank, that's good. Okay, so we've put in our primer bulb. Now when you do put the primer bulb in, there is a long uh, nipple and a short nipple. Short sucks, long blows. So the long one blows the fuel back into your tank. So the return line will be attached to the long nipple and the short nipple sucks so it sucks the fuel through your carburetor and it will be attached to this side of your carburetor when it, uh, i put it back together so also when you put your primer bulb in it does have a little notch in it that for which way it needs to set um but as you can see on this one the long nipple is on the top and the short nipple is on the bottom and then it's got these two pushing prongs that you're going to just push on through the housing right there okay so let's go ahead and show you the carburetor Now 
this carburetor is a little different. Um, a lot of times you'll have one side you have to take off and a metering side you have to take off. This has it all on the same side. So we are going to grab a screwdriver here and take this side off. Now when you now when you get these four screws out on this particular one, everything, both of these blocks come off together. And the reason let me take this metering diaphragm off is because there's actually a screw that holds these two pieces together. This uh, outside part and this normally would be on the complete other side of the carburetor but this one stops so we're going to take this screw out of the center here and show you this side the gasket and the diaphragm So those are the pieces to the carburetor kit, and we also have the needle. Don't want to lose that little screw. All right, we've got a needle, our little needle lever, our spring. So these are the pieces that came in the carburetor kit. And when you go to put it back in, now you're going to want to clean it. I put mine in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, you can spray it out with carburetor cleaner if you'd like. A lot of times if you're at home, this does have a splined um, high and low jets. For It's a special tool and a lot of people don't have it. You can find them online. Uh, I will put a link in the description box below so you can find it if you need it. Um, this actual spline tool, it fits all the Poulans also. So it's, it comes in really handy for the Husqvarna's, the trimmers, chainsaws, and the, all the uh, Poulan and Craftsman stuff. So, all right, so once it's clean and sprayed out, if you got some carburetor cleaner, we're going to put it back together. First thing you're going to do is put your needle back inside. Your needle lever right here. You're gonna put the spring back in its little spot. And the more you do this, the better you'll get. But you're gonna to want to go in and you're gonna do like a swooping action. You're gonna go under the needle while you're pushing down on the spring in this little notch area all at the same time. And it is difficult in the beginning, but you'll get it. So you'll come down on it. Go under the needle, you've grabbed the spring, it's it's sitting in that little notch of the lever that it needs to be in, and you're just gonna hold it all down as you put your screw back in. Now you can check your lever, but 99.9% .9 of the time when you get a um, OEM kit, it is always set perfectly so you really don't have to mess with it um, for this particular chainsaw the carburetor kit is a RB149 so when you go to put the next piece on now you can get this backwards so you need to make sure that your holes like it looks like it could go either way but it actually can't because there's a hole in the center here and there's there's holes in this gasket the next part is this gasket so what you have to notice here is there's a big hole and a small hole on this side and one small hole in the center on this side so if you put your gasket on correctly this one small center hole just has the center hole right here and then you've got this long elongated hole and a circle for this small hole and that one right there so those go on like that and then the gasket or the metering diaphragm will go the same way. It's got the one 
hole on that one side and the multiple holes on this side. So we're just going to set this aside for a second because we're going to put this all back together. Now, you know, this is your bottom base. I always go off this, that all these ribbed parts right here, it's easiest to know the gasket always goes against the rib part, even if these are on opposite sides of the carburetor. It's the same, uh, same deal. So you're going to put the gasket the way it lines up. And usually sometimes there's a little nipple that goes through this gasket, so it'll line up right. You're gonna put that on first. And you also, it has this arch part here that's easy to tell. Then we're going to put our diaphragm on top of there. And next, see the screens on this side right here, and we replaced that in the kit also, but I didn't take that back out. And then we're gonna put this piece back on. Once you've got that all lined up, and, and even this part, it will go on that little metal nipple that's sticking up, so. So if I stick it the right way, it will actually work. Okay, now that I have it all together, I'm gonna to replace the screw that I took out of the center that was holding it all together. And we can put it all back on here. So you can see that big hole and the small hole, just like on this side, has the big hole, the small hole, and then the one center hole on the other side. So we're gonna put that right on top of there. And it all pops in nicely, and we're gonna put our screws back in. And that is how you put the carburetor kit in. these down real good. And I think it's ready to go back onto the chainsaw. All right, we're gonna pour our saw back over. Now, when you put it back on, this line right here, and the, you can see the two adjusting screws, you have this line right here. This is the line that goes to the primer ball because that's where it sucks through. It sucks through the carburetor and into the primer ball from this line. So we're going to attach that to the primer ball when we go back on. The black fuel line we have right here, this is the one going to the fuel filter. We're going to put it onto this uh, nipple down here at the bottom of the carburetor because it, the gas goes through the fuel filter, through the fuel line, through the nipple, through the carburetor, through this line, into the primer bulb, and back into the tank with the return line. So we can go ahead and grab our throttle lever again, and we're going to attach that to this side hole right here. Pull your choke lever up out of the way because it likes to get in the way and we're going to put it back on the studs so we'll put it all back together here now as we go back down i'm going to move this line all the way to the other side so i can reattach it to that nipple down at the bottom right and i'm actually going to cut off this end that's curved because we want it sort of a flush fit against the carburetor once you get your line on here. So. Alright, we've got that line on. We're going to return this line coming from the carburetor to the short nipple can suck the gas through. Just like that, get that out of the way. This line goes over the top and it goes to the long nipple because it returns the fuel back into the tank. Just like that. So we have all our fuel lines attached. Now we can replace our air filter base. Now when you do, the choke lever goes in this little spot right here underneath the uh, kill switch. So you're going to go down like that. And we're going to 
going to put it back on those studs. That looks all good. Now we can replace our nuts to hold our carburetor back on. And always be careful when you're dealing with plastic bases and anything that might be plastic on the back. There, some of the, the older Husqvarna's were terrible about um, having plastic bases that would strip out, and because the, the screws that would hold the carburetor on were like like wood screws, the the threads were so thick on them. So this last one, keep the handle that way. Now we're going to put this long screw back in the air filter base. And that was the T20, I think. Yeah. Just hold the engine up a little bit. That's the T20. Now that we've got the air filter base back on, we have this piece right here. Now the thing you gotta watch out is the rubber, it's it's sort of just like a dust deflector, you know, shield so dust doesn't get up in here. Make sure that it's still in its area because it likes to fall out as you're messing with all this. So there's actually a slot that this plastic base is going to go into. So we're just going to Put it in there. And once you get it in the slot, it, everything goes flush together and you're able to put this tiny little screw back in the side, the one that's always no fun. Now you sort of got to hold it real tight together while you do that because it'll come out. And I know you can't see me putting this screw back in, but you sort of just got to dig your fingers down in there and do it. Right. Now we've got it in a little bit. You can sort of get down. It keeps screwing. There we go. We got that tight, so we got this piece back on. Next thing we do, we can reattach our handle. So let's go turn it on over here. The first one that we're going to do is this back one right here is usually one of the easiest ones to get back on. The spring, you'll just make sure that the spring is over this, this hole right here. We're sort of lopsided there. There we go. Make sure of that. And then that's one of the, the short screws here. You're going to use your T25 to put it back in. One. It's going into that buffer, so I believe that this is one of the long screws. It's sort of hard to show you this on camera. We got those tightened down. We're going to get our last one here that goes in the side. 
is this long screw right here, T25. We have the air filter to go back. New air filter up in there. Put a little air filter bracket back down in there. And the last screw is the T25 to hold the air filter in place. All right, we did it. We're going to throw some gas in it. We're going to see if it runs. All right, so we've done everything we possibly could to this saw. We've put a carburetor kit in, fuel lines, fuel filter, changed the fuel, put an air filter, a plug. Now it's time to see if it's gonna start. I do have my spline adjusting tool and a small flathead for the throttle adjust. If I need it, let's uh, see if it's gonna run. Going to prime it. Come on, choke. I'm going to count that as a pop-off. Idle's good. Again, so much for tuning back into Chicanic. Hopefully, this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us yet on Facebook, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic, or we are now on Instagram at instagram.com slash chicanic, where you will find the real chicanic, the behind the scenes that does not make it to YouTube. So thanks and have a great day.